Hello, I'm at the NEC for the Classic Car and Restoration Show. You may have already seen it on the workshop show, in which case you might know what I'm here to do. But if you don't, it's all about this car, which you have seen before, possibly several times on the show, but not looking like it does now, which is pretty smart. This is the car we're taking racing, but last time you saw it, it didn't look like this. It's an MGB GT and it's actually the last car I drove on Top Gear. Um, I kept it just because I'm sentimental and that's what this whole event is all about. And the reason we're taking it racing? Well, if you've seen it on the show, you'll already know this, but just to explain, we wanted to get the smallest cog in front of the right kind of people, people who are passionate about their classic cars, but ideally they'll also break them. And the best bunch of people for doing that are, of course, people who race classic cars. They love their cars, they damage them every weekend, they have to pay to get them repaired, and then they damage them again. So what better way to get to them than to build our own race car, form our own race team, small is called racing, and take it racing. That way, we'll be right alongside them when they bury theirs in the pit lane wall. Hopefully, we won't do the same. So, it was a bit of a rush to get the car done for the show, which is why it isn't done it's not finished but actually we took the decision this is a restoration show everybody here is restoring cars they've all got an interest in that they'll understand that so we're launching the intent to go racing this is the car we'll be doing it when we've turned it into a racing car and that's the announcement we're going to be making here today and i for one am absolutely delighted with it we're very lucky with the colors of our logo because they've given us this i think you'd agree pretty groovy livery and very soon this year we will be campaigning this at classic car races and events around the country. I don't know how many we're going to be able to do. Another good reason for using this car, it's, it's real. And we're doing this on a budget. We're using the MGB GT because I had it. Um, we haven't gone out and bought a brand new DB4 GT because we don't have the money. So it keeps it relatable, keeps it more real. I think the classic car world gets a bit tired sometimes of people turning up with all the money in the world and then they look out on their drive and think, I can't afford one of those. This is an affordable classic car for a lot of people. So we're gonna take it racing and they'll get to see it. That's the plan. I'm on a bit of a break whilst we're filming here at the show and there would be something wrong with me if I didn't want to have a bit of a mooch about. So I'm going to. And first impression, the whole modern classics thing. I mean, that's a classic, that's incredible. What's also terrifying is a lot of the cars here, as I look around, I have reviewed when they were new and now they're classics. That's terrifying. Everybody likes a Mini, you have to love a Mini, it's the law. Oh, little Clubman, lovely. It's honestly everywhere you go. A mate of mine had one of those, he built it while I was building a Jago Jeep kit car. Beach buggies. Oh God, we drove beach buggies across Namibia on Grand Tour, and I'd always been a bit sniffy about them, but mm, why would I bother? But you know what? That little flat four engine is so characterful once it's warm. And weirdly, the other day driving on the M5, I overtook what was my beach buggy from that special. I don't know whose it is, somebody's got it, because it was very distinctive. It was still in the same zebra stripes, I was glad to see. You've got to love a beach buggy, they're ridiculous, but fun. I saw earlier on, there was an Opal Manta. Yeah, there you go. That is bloody hell, that's close enough to actually be my old car. If it's an automatic, that's really close. Yeah, it is. I had that exact car. Opel Manta 2-litre Berlinetta automatic. I swapped it for a motorbike in about 1993. And I didn't crash that one, it fell apart of its own volition. And I think I swapped it out for another motorbike, but I parked it up on a curb where you couldn't see the oil dripping. My 4 lovely, gotta love them. Oh, Williams Clear, again, that is modern classical. What I was working at Renault in the press office when those came out, and now it's a classic. So I launched it, and now it's a classic car. I'm so old. It's a cracking show, this, I've got to say, because what it's doing very well is blending the real classic-y classics with the more everyday stuff and the more modern classics, which 
is where the seat, oh, ah, Morris Marina Owners Club. I'm not gonna be popular here. We've destroyed quite a lot of those on the telly. Oh my God, there's a Maxi Owners Club. That's fantastic, oh, right, mate. Yes. That's brilliant news. Mate of mine had one We've of those. We've got a buyer's guide over there. This is, what well, he's just pointed out, this is genius. So this is a buyer's guide. If you wanted to buy an Austin Maxi, I don't know why you would, but if you did, there's everything you need to know about it. Hydroelastic and hydrogas displacers and pipes, steering rack bushware, front suspension button. It's, that's a perfect buyer's guide. That's such a clever idea. Twin carb exhaust manifold cracks. Basically, what all this adds up to is don't. <laughs> that's having a sense of humor about your own passion, isn't it? I love these cars, but the truth of the matter is they have problems and there they are listed. Oh my word. Do you know that is, it's not a real police car because it's clearly a race car, but that is very cool. Mark one Escort. I remember when police cars were this color. I think that's a color that doesn't even exist in the world anymore. Yeah, that's fantastic. Saabs, look at these. Now some of these were two strokes, weren't they? Yeah, two stroke, three cylinder. Fabulous. I mean, off, but how are you doing? That is gorgeous. <gasps> oh, one of my all time favorite cars. Absolutely gorgeous things. That is, is it actually the original? I think that's the actual P1800 that the Saint had. That's, I just think that's such a beautiful car. Right, that's enough of me having a mooch around in a bit of a tree. I've got to get back to work on the cog stand because we're launching our race car in uh, uh, 50 minutes. I've got to think of something to say. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are a new classic car restoration business. We're doing our little bit with our little business. And so we've come up with a frankly brilliant idea. The smallest cog is forming the smallest cog racing. And we are going classic car racing. So to that end, we need a race car. We have it here with us today. You may have guessed what it is, given the stand that it's on. Anthony and Andrew, if you'd like to do duties, please. Here it comes. Three, two, one, reveal it, reveal it. Stage. Mr. Richard Hammond! Hello. Yes, it's me, the tall one off that car show. I don't think there's ever been a better time for this show to happen because look at the broader sweep of what cars are and how they matter and what's happened. A hundred plus years ago they started out and it was, well it was a novelty for tops, wasn't it really? Oh look, Carruthers is coming up the drive and there's no horse in front. Oh, it was a novelty, but then it went on to change and to shape our world. And now it is changing. Whereas when it first started, it was just a novelty, not important, it became very important. Now the car is changing again, and we understand and appreciate its significance. So it's a really exciting time, and to be here at the hub of where we all share a passion for keeping these things working. Yeah. Again, what better time to be making, doing, mending? Well, the show day is now winding down to a close, and I think we can chalk it up as a success. A uh, generally warm response to the idea of the smallest cog race team, and definitely to the car. People are loving it, and you'll love it even more when we've turned it into a race car. If you want to see how we actually do when it comes to the white-hot crucible of racing as a team and as a car, then click the link in the description and watch the show.